It was sealed for over 3,000 years. Buried deep beneath layers of sand and time, a stone coffin emerged from the earth in the heart of Uttar Pradesh, India. Inside, it wasn't gold. It wasn't jewels. It was DNA. But not just any DNA. A single strand. Ancient, preserved, and disturbingly intact. When scientists opened the coffin, they expected relics. Maybe a skeleton. What they found sent a shockwave through the global scientific community. Because this DNA, quietly resting for millennia, didn't to match anything previously discovered in the region. In fact, it didn't belong to any known genetic lineage of modern Indian populations. This wasn't just a burial. It was a message left behind by a people long forgotten or deliberately erased. Who were they? Where did they come from? And why had their story vanished from history? Now, with cutting-edge genetic sequencing, scientists are decoding secrets buried for thousands of years. And what they're finding could rewrite the story of India's origins. Could everything we thought we knew be wrong? The discovery took place in the Gangetic Plain, a region often called the Cradle of Indian Civilization. Rich in history, this land has seen the rise and fall of empires for over 5,000 years, from the Indus Valley Civilization to the Maurya and Gupta dynasties. But nothing had ever been unearthed quite like this. The coffin was found in 2023, during an excavation near Kanauj, once known as the perfume capital of India, but far older than its medieval fame suggests. The tomb was carved from a single block of stone, sealed tight, untouched by looters or time. Radiocarbon dating placed it around 1200 BCE, a period of intense migration, warfare, and cultural fusion across the subcontinent. Yet the DNA found inside told a story that didn't match the known historical timeline. It hinted at a population older than the Indo-Aryans, unrelated to the Dravidians, and completely foreign to the genetic landscape of the region. That changed everything. Why was a foreign lineage buried so carefully in a land already teeming with civilizations? What did they know that modern science is only now beginning to uncover? One coffin, one code hidden in our blood, and a mystery spanning millennia. It began with a crack in the earth. During a routine survey for a government irrigation project, a team of archaeologists noticed something unusual, a rectangular outline in the soil, unusually symmetrical, buried deep beneath the farmland outside Kanauj. The deeper they dug, the stranger it became. A slab of stone, impossibly smooth, sealed tight without mortar. No inscriptions, no markings. But the moment it was opened, silence fell. Inside lay a perfectly preserved skeleton, its bones fragile but intact. The body was placed with precision, arms crossed, face turned west. But it wasn't the bones that caught their breath. It was a small clay vessel, sealed and stored beside the skull. Inside the vessel, a dark, resin-like substance. The team almost dismissed it, until chemical analysis revealed something chilling. The resin had preserved soft tissue and genetic material. It was a long shot, but if viable DNA could be extracted, this would be one of the oldest genomes ever recovered from the Indian subcontinent. The question was no longer what was in the coffin. It became who was this person? And what bloodline did they carry? Everything was about to change. The DNA was fragile, ancient, contaminated by centuries of soil and decay. One wrong move, and the genetic material would be lost forever. So the clay vessel was flown under extreme cold storage to the CSIR Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in Hyderabad one of India's leading genetic research labs. There, a multidisciplinary team of archaeologists, geneticists, and forensic anthropologists began the delicate task of extraction. 
Using next-generation sequencing and a sterile clean room built for ancient DNA analysis, they managed to isolate fragments of mitochondrial and nuclear DNA. But the results didn't make sense. The sequences didn't match any known databases. Not the ancestral North Indians, not the ancestral South Indians, not even the ancient Indo-Aryan or Dravidian lineages. Instead, the genome bore markers only previously found in Central Asian steppe populations. And even more shockingly, in some Eastern European Neolithic tribes, this sent the team spiraling. How could someone with no known connection to ancient India be buried at the center of one of its oldest cultural heartlands? Had history missed an entire migration wave? Or was this individual something else entirely? The search for answers intensified. The data didn't lie. After months of sequencing and cross-referencing, the full genome was finally assembled. And the results were shocking. The individual's DNA showed a high percentage of haplogroup R1A Z93, a marker common in Central Asian steppe herders, but with mutations that had never been documented in South Asia before. Even more startling was a distinct signature traced back to Eastern Europe's Kukuteni Tripilia culture, a Neolithic society that vanished mysteriously over 5,000 years ago. The genetic overlap wasn't minor. It was statistically significant. This wasn't coincidence. It was ancestry. In other words, the person buried in the coffin of Uttar Pradesh was a direct descendant of an unknown migratory lineage, stretching from the Ukrainian plains through Central Asia and into the Indian subcontinent, long before the accepted timeline of Indo-Aryan arrival. This changed everything, not just about migration, but about who the first Indians really were. It suggested that before the known civilizations, before the Vedic hymns and the rise of empires, there was another people, long-forgotten carriers of culture, language, and identity, who shaped the land's future from the shadows. What else had they left behind? Imagine it. 4,000 years ago, a caravan of nomads moving slowly across the steppes. Driven by changing climate, dwindling resources, and perhaps something more, a calling, a destiny, they journeyed eastward, from the Caspian Sea, through the Hindu Kush, across Afghanistan, and into the fertile plains of northern India. They were not conquerors. They brought no armies. What they carried was knowledge, of metallurgy, of agriculture, of burial rituals that honored the dead with precision and reverence. They settled quietly, blending with local tribes, passing down language, myths, and genetic code. And yet, within a few generations, they vanished. No monuments, no empires, just whispers in the soil. Until one burial, perfectly sealed, perfectly preserved, held on to their secret. The skeleton in the coffin was likely a leader. His bones showed signs of status, well-fed, no signs of violence, carefully arranged. He wasn't mourned by chance. He was chosen to be remembered, maybe even to be rediscovered. Now, through the silent language of DNA, he speaks again. The bloodline that once flowed through forgotten rivers and ancient tongues is still alive, in the genes of millions, unknowingly carrying the legacy of the true first settlers of India. The coffin may be closed again, the excavation site now quiet, but the echo of what was discovered in Uttar Pradesh still resonates across the world. One man, one strand of DNA, and a lineage lost to time now returned to the surface. This discovery doesn't just change the story of India, it reshapes the story of human migration itself. What other secrets lie buried beneath our feet? How many civilizations have vanished, not in war or fire, but simply forgotten? Every sample, every tomb, 
every ancient sequence waiting to be decoded might hold another missing piece of who we are and who we were. As science advances, so does our understanding of the past. And with every genome mapped, the borders of history blur between legend and fact, between myth and memory. The ancestors we thought we knew, they might not have been the first, just the last to be remembered. If this kind of story fascinates you, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and dive deeper with us into the mysteries of the ancient world. Because somewhere in the next dig, the truth is waiting.